in this short video I will explain you how to indeed develop a code for the problem presented here this was one of the questions one of the problems that we had in the midtermism for the industrial automation course here in, in Nazarbayev University so the process is like this there are two conveyor belts which are con controlled with the motor M1 and M2 and we have items metal plates moving on the first conveyor and they are being stacked on the second conveyor we have a sensor here to detect uh, that one uh, metal plate has passed in it or it is stacked in the on top of the second conveyor we have two push buttons one for start stop and the other one for starting start push button is normally open and the stop push button is normally closed one and we can control the start and stop of the process using those push buttons so here is the description conveyor m1 is used to stack metal plates onto conveyor m2 photoelectric sensor provides an input pulse to the psc each time a metal plate drops from conveyor m1 to m2 when 15 plates have been stacked conveyor m2 is activated for seven seconds the operation of the program can be summarized as follows so when the start button is pressed conveyor m1 begins running after 15 plates have been stacked, conveyor M1 will stop and conveyor M2 will begin running. After conveyor M2 has been operated for 7 seconds, it stops and the sequence repeats automatically. So more metal plates will be collected, uh, will be stacked on conveyor M2 indeed. And when the stop push button is pressed, both conveyors will stop. And now I will show you how to simulate this and how to develop the code in the CADSYS environment I already have created one project the programming language is chosen as ladder logic Java I have created some of the variables that I will uh, use in the program and I will add uh, other ones later so we have the start and stop boolean variables motor 1 and motor 2 boolean variables and sensor as the boolean variable in the visualization part, I have added these three push buttons, one for start, one for stop, and one for sensor. And I have two pilot lamps here for motor one and motor two. And I'm going to show, show you the number of items stacked on uh, conveyor M2 here in this text field. Indeed. I will come back to the visualization later, but for now we can start to develop the code since we need to use the start and stop push buttons to start and stop the operation and those push buttons are momentary we need to have some kind of self-holding scenario here using some internal variable so I will start with placing the required contacts the first one will be for stop second one for the start and this uh, I will call it internal variable for now and it should be a boolean one as you can see here and here I need to have this internal variable in parallel with start in order to keep it uh, turned on when I release the start uh, push button indeed, yeah? and I can do it from here just changing the name to the same int var variable now I will add another network in the second network uh, I should indeed use a counter to count the number of items stacked on M2 for that I will activate this with uh, let's say internal variable whenever we have the internal variable too and we have information pulses coming from the sensor I need to use uh, one of counting counter placing it here so this signal will provide, uh, I need to declare it, 
so we can keep the name as it is. The signal coming from internal variable and sensor will provide the counting input or counting up input for the counter. The preset value should be set to 15 because we want to keep track of the number of, uh, let's say, 15 number of items. And I will talk about the preset, preset uh, sorry, about the reset of the counter later. And I can leave the, oops, I can leave the current value empty for now. So what happens is that whenever we press the start push button and the process is started, each time that there is an item uh, falling onto the stack in M2, we will have a pulse here generated from the sensor and the current value of the counter will increase by 1 until it reaches 15. So whenever it reaches 15, we need to start M2 and we need to stop M1 and M2 should be uh, running for 7 seconds. And for that we can maybe use a timer. So what I want to do here is to again use this internal variable. And as far as the counter is not run, it means that our motor, motor one, the first motor for the conveyor, for the first conveyor, could be running. So I will use a negated <laughs> contact here, and then I will use a coil, and the negated contact here should refer to the run bit of the counter. So when we press uh, indeed start, and there are items, the motor one indeed should be turned on. So let's assign this to motor one. And when motor one is turned on, uh, I need to put my caps on, it's already on. So motor one like this. So the counter at the beginning is not done. So here we have true signal. And as the internal variable, as the start is pressed and internal variable is true, the motor 1 will be turned on. And as motor 1 is turned on, items will be stacked. As a result, sensor will provide some s s uh, signals to the uh, upcounting counter, and the current value of the counter will increase. Until it reaches the preset value, which is 15, and at that point, this uh, in the instruction here will be false, and as a result, motor 1 will turn on. We also need to have seven seconds of operation for the M2. I can do it from here. So I will create, introduce a branch here. Uh, I'm trying to do it with not with the work with mouse. Okay, now I have a branch here. So, and I want to start one on delay timer whenever the counter is finished counting. So when the counter is done, I will use one on delay timer, the on, place it here. there, just declare it under a timer. Uh, the preset time should be set to 7 seconds. I will leave the lapse time empty. And I will use this information to turn on motor 2. Which means that as far as Counter is done, ctu.q. And the on delay timer that we have here t 
e r underline zero dot q is not finished timing so i need it to, i need to negate this during those time periods i need to turn on the second mode as far as timer is done motor will be turned off motor 2 will be turned off or whenever the counter is reset the motor will be turned off as well and now for resetting the the counter i can use the done bit of the timer again so we will have tr underline zero dot q whenever the timer is finished timing for seven seconds counter will be reset and as a result motor two will be stopped motor one will be started because we have uh, negated done bit of the counter here i guess this is all that we need for the programming part now we need to assign these uh, elements to the variables that we have so this will be associated with motor one motor one which is here this one will be associated with motor two the start push button will be used to change the value of start so i will select start from here and the stop push button will be used to change the value of the stop variable and i also need to take this tap pause and sensor will be used to change the the value of the sensor here the only thing which is left is here for the text box i have provided is uh, percentage i and uh, now i need to associate it with the current value of the counter initially you don't see the text variable here because codice is by default things that you are not an expert so it shows you a simplified uh, set of properties if you click on this expert view here you will see the state variable we should be able to find it uh, the text variable indeed not a state and for the text variable now we can select the uh, counter zero current value and this should be all that we need to do now we need to put the online mode into simulation and we can try to compile the code and log in to see their compile errors now let's see what are the compile errors maybe we have some issues here so variables start all the variables are declared there uh, okay in the visualization but we don't have anything in that regard input and visualization ah, okay for some reason i have this where in out repeated two times let me try to build again okay now there is no error I don't know why it has happened so we can try to log in
okay and then we can try to run and now here we have it yeah so I put it here let's see what do we have for the so I initially needed to press the stop button once because by default it had uh, pause now if I press start motor one is started and each time that I press st sensor here the value here should increase by one and that's the case here one two three four and this will increase until 15 so once we reach 15 you can see that motor one is stopped motor two is started and it will be like that for seven seconds then motor one is started and here we have the number of items collected equal to zero and we can continue doing the same procedure if i press stop both of the motors will stop and if i press start you can see that motor one is now started and the information coming from sensor is used again here to turn on this the second uh, motor for seven seconds and then motor one will be turned on for until we have uh, enough number of items collected here uh, okay so i think that's all for this uh, video i hope you have enjoyed watching it. it it's somehow a simple example but you you could see how to use the counters and upcounting counter together with some other information coming from the sensors and here you can see how to simulate the visualization where you have two motors and you have a start stop push buttons one push button to simulate the sensor and here you can see how to display the the integer values within the visualization so i hope you have enjoyed the video thank you for watching and see you next time